What's up, Notre Dame fans? This is the weekly recruiting wrap here at blueandgold.com every Friday. We just kind of had this idea off the top of my head. I was like, you know, every Friday, let's let's give the people what they want, which is Notre Dame football recruiting coverage, especially here on our YouTube page. So few items that uh, occurred this week. This is basically just going to wrap it up um, what happened. First, we have three new cornerback offers in the 2022 class, most notable, Earl Little. For our YouTube audience, you guys are going to have to squint in a little bit. Uh, the son of Earl Little Sr. Um, played at Miami um, in Earl Little um, Plantation, Florida American Heritage. Uh, you see the future cast pick in. Some folks think he's already you know, leaning towards the Hurricanes, ranked as a top 100 player, number 90 in the country, number 10 cornerback. In the land, and then you have Davison Igbenoson, three-star prospect, listed at 6'3", 185, so offers that safety versatility you'd imagine as well. And Ryland Gandy down in my neck of the woods, Buford, Georgia, uh, a couple three-star prospects, and then a top 100 recruit, so cornerback recruiting heating up. Yeah, definitely. Earl Little is a stud. Um, he's going to be one of the better corners in this class. You mentioned the, the NFL bloodlines. His dad's a stud, too. So um, he's going to be a tough pull for Notre Dame. I think it's going to be very difficult to get him out of the state of Florida. Um, Mike, you and I talked a lot about Ryland Gandy this week. Um, his teammate is also a Notre Dame target, Jake Pope. So I'm sure you'll be seeing him pretty soon, or seeing the both of them, actually. So uh, that'll be interesting for you. I might have to come down to Georgia and see, uh, see you and them. Sure, Davison Igbenosun, um, you know, a guy up in Jersey, when he tweeted out that he landed the offer from the Irish, he, he posted a picture of Clarence Lewis. Um, I noticed that. Yeah, so that, that was pretty neat. His offer list kind of reminds me of, of what Clarence Lewis had, and I think um, and, and Igbenosun's already rated higher. Another interesting thing here, Mason, um, within 24 hours of these three guys landing a Notre Dame offer, Cincinnati offered all of them. <laughs> so, yep. um, you know, Mike Mickens offered these three, but I think it's a it's pretty safe to assume that Marcus Freeman had some say in it. Um, he was scouting them at Cincinnati because, you know, then, then the Bearcats offered all three. Yeah, I think it seems likely. Freeman knows the guys that he wants to go after. It seems likely that he was already looking into these guys when he was at Cincinnati. And we are I think we're going to see more offers here soon of players he was already recruiting at Cincinnati and then kind of offer them from Notre Dame. So, uh, Mike, you and I are going to be busy here pretty soon, I'm sure. But uh, Freeman, as we've been told and from what we've seen um, in his work at Cincinnati, he's a great recruiter. So it uh, should be exciting times for you and I. Mike, we got a first-team All-State here. Logan Diggs, that's really impressive. In the state of Louisiana, the first-team All-State running back. He's got the stats to back it up, too, Mike. Averaging nearly 6.4 yards per carry on the season. 139 carries, 903 yards, and 10 touchdowns when it was all said and done. This guy, I think he, Notre Dame needs him in this class. It's not all said and done yet, not until next month. But uh, I think you're feeling pretty confident about this one. Yeah, and it was just eight games, I believe, he played in, right. too. And, um in Louisiana, yeah, Logan Diggs was an impressive, had an impressive season running the ball, um, catching the ball in the backfield, involved in the return game. I believe he had a you know punt return and and um and kickoff return touchdowns. Yeah, so Notre Dame signed twenty seven prospects in December. If you guys remember, uh, uh, during his uh, signing day press conference, Brian Kelly said that this was going to be his biggest class ever at Notre Dame. Which right. was 27 in the 2018 class. So, you know, when Brian Kelly says things like that in a press conference, it usually happens. You know, like when you declare something kind of like that. So, um, I, I, look, guys, um, Logan Diggs got the offer from LSU a week before National Signing Day. And it was kind of like, man, it's going to be like this battle between the Tigers and Fighting Irish. And I was expecting him to sign in, in December and, and with Notre Dame and lock it up. Well, it's been very, very quiet on the Logan Diggs front here in January. Uh, we were about, what, two, two and a half weeks or so from the uh, f you know first Wednesday in February national signing period. So, um, you know, it, it's it's been quiet for a reason. I'll say that. And, um, you know, just, just be patient, folks. Um, like Mason said, feeling really good about where the Irish are at here. Notre Dame's offered two quarterback recruits in the 2022 class. Steve Angeli's the one 
that people are talking about the most, Mason. But don't forget about Gavin Wimsatt. Uh, six foot three, two hundred pounder, uh, four star prospect, number fifty four overall player in the twenty twenty two class, number one player from state of Kentucky, and number one dual threat quarterback. You know, when you look at the rankings, this is the guy that people are looking at and saying, "Wow, this he can get us to the next level." But don't sleep on Steve Angeli either, folks. That kid's a, a stud. So this was in with an interview with Josh Hemholt at Rivals dot com. Gavin Wimsat, speaking about Notre Dame, said the relationship with Notre Dame is good. I talked with the quarterback's coach, Tommy Reese. He's experienced being in that quarterback position at Notre Dame, so he can help a lot. I could definitely see myself fitting in that offense with the way they play. We'll have a future video breaking down Notre Dame quarterback recruiting, but Mason, your thoughts on Gavin Wimsat? Well, I think it's interesting that he they said that he can see himself fitting into the Notre Dame offense, firstly, and then secondly, that... Tommy Reese can help him out a lot in playing quarterback at Notre Dame. A lot of people say it's the most difficult position, um, especially in a school like Notre Dame where all the eyes are on you. And Ian Books has his fair share of that too, where all the eyes are on him and he's completely blamed for losses. But um, nobody knows that better than Tommy Reese. So um, I, that's not the first time anybody said that either about um, – Tommy Reese knowing firsthand what it's like to play quarterback at a place like Notre Dame. So I think that's significant. I really like Wimsat. I think his his film jumps off the page a little bit more than Angeli, if that makes sense. Um, Angeli is the safer pick. I think Wimsat has the higher upside, but I don't think Notre Dame can go wrong either way here as long as they land one of them. A top three here, Jake Taylor. USC, Oklahoma, Notre Dame, three heavy hitters here, but you've kind of felt like Taylor was leaning Notre Dame here for a while, and now you have a future cast pick in for him. I do as well. Uh, break down that top three for me. Yeah, and just to mention real quick, all, all of these guys so far have been in the class of 2022, so they are uh, you know, high school juniors going into their senior season right. this fall, except for Diggs. You know, he just wrapped up his senior season, so he's a class of 2021. I want to make sure I mention that real quick. So there's Jake Taylor. This picture you see is actually from our Los Angeles Rivals camp. Um, this was March 1st. Really, the la one of the last things I got to do before the pandemic um, and, and normal recruiting coverage on the road. Um, so when Jake Taylor reached out to – or when Jake Taylor went to this camp, he reached out to me um, a few days before. He said, hey, Mr. Singer, I'm going to be at the, the Los Angeles Rivals camp. I would really like to meet you. And I was like, all right, yeah, I'm the big guy and the – you know, I'll be wearing jeans and, and, and a black polo and, you know, got to meet Jake Taylor and, you know, just super nice kid. I remember thinking, wow, like this, this seems like a Notre Dame kid, like just super polite, you know, great young man. And then, you know, fast forward seven months, Notre Dame offers him a scholarship. I don't think, um, you know, he was too much on the radar at that point. He really blew up. Um, you know, during the dead period, you know, spring and uh, into the summer and early fall. And then Notre Dame offered and really made a huge impact on his recruitment. Hasn't been to South Bend yet. He has been to Oklahoma. I'm not sure about USC. You know, I think that's a four hour drive. So whether or not he's been to USC, he will probably get to go there again. But keep an eye on Notre Dame in this recruitment. Like Mason said, I, I do feel like uh, Notre Dame will win the recruitment. Partly because Notre Dame wants him bad. And, like, you know, obviously the Fighting Irish took at everyone they get. And, and you know, Jeff Quinn has had misses on the recruiting front, too. Uh, obviously, you know, it happens to everybody. But this just this one just feels like Jake Taylor such a strong Notre Dame fit. Um, he's got a great family, bright kids, you know, great in the classroom, uh, great on the field as well. So just with all those things and that Notre Dame wants him bad, it just makes a lot of sense. That's going to do it for our first weekly recruiting wrap. If you liked this video, why don't you hit the like button, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and make sure to lock into blueandgold.com for all of your Notre Dame Fighting Irish football recruiting coverage.